All right, to Liberty Expert Nation, I'm here with Corey Morgan. Corey Morgan is a blogger, a prolific blogger, activist. He was a Libertarian Party candidate in 2015. Uh, he blogs also for the Western Standard and does a po- you do a podcast with him now too, I think, right? Yeah, we're uh, expanding our digital production, I guess you could say, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks for joining me. Uh, I've been taking a little bit of heat. It looks like you have too over our some of our comments, uh, critical comments about this. Uh, I think it was called the Jericho March or something like that. It was a bunch of uh, people marching with tiki torches to protest the lockdown. And it came to my attention because I saw Rachel Notley uh, tweet out something about white supremacists marching on downtown with tiki torches. And I'm like, oh, you idiot there, there's no way this is happening um and I, I google search did a quick google search and sure enough there are some people marching with tiki churches now uh, in fairness i don't think they're white supremacists by any stretch i just think they're maybe some uh uh people who've never heard of charlottesville maybe or, or I, I i don't know what what the deal is what what's your take on all this uh like I, I, I was shocked when I saw it too. And, and no, I don't think the, mo- the majority of them or perhaps even any of them are white supremacists, but I, I think a number of them were probably naively just handed torches. You know, they wanted to take part and thought, yeah, if that's what we're doing, but to feign ignorance on every level of it, on what those torches now represent due to the Charlottesville event. I mean, the leadership of that March damn well knew. Uh, somebody yeah. knew. And, and, they're just, I don't understand it. You're losing well, all possible messaging of what you were trying to do when, when you pull us. Right, right. And and I don't know, it, this is, it's just ironic and weird on so many levels. I mean, first of all, you have the, the, the whoever made that poster of the Jericho March, um, they pulled an image directly from Charlottesville of a bunch of people with tiki torches. Now, these were people who were, were chanting, uh, Jews will not replace us among other things and blood and soil, which is the, you know, the famous kind of Nazi or, or, uh, slogan. And uh, so that the people were actual neo-Nazis. So they pull a picture of that to represent uh, supposedly a band of Israelites who are going to go and destroy this town and uh, kill all the men and boys and take all the, the virgins for themselves. Um, just weird messaging on all levels. Uh, so, I mean, clearly, it's probably not anti-Semitic if it's being used to portray, uh, you know, a, a band of Israelites that are marching around um, being faithful to God's word or something like that. Uh, but what a weird kind of choice to make. Where, where, what do you think people were, were thinking here? Or like, surely they must have had some. Well, they, they had to. I mean, they're, they're active political type people, uh, activists. I mean, they, they had to have been watching that. I, I just, I honestly don't get it. But then the the, the leader of that, Arter Pawlowski, uh, I mean, he is a, a, he likes to really inflame things and stir the pot. I Very possibly, he knew exactly what sort of backlash he was going to get and, and wanted to present himself as a victim of that evil, you know, mislabeling crowd that tries to cancel people. But I mean, uh, yes, un- there's a lot of unfair painting of people as white supremacists all the time and everything. But if I went marching downtown in Calgary in a KKK outfit, I'm going to get labeled as that, even if right. I'm not uh, a KKK member. I mean, you've got to, you can't just hand them red meat and not expect them to take it. Yeah, you're, you're handing, the, handing the enemy some ammo here. And, you know, that's, that's why I'm so critical here is that, look, th- these people are actually on my side. Uh, I don't want the lockdowns. I think it's horrible that they're arresting pa- pastors. I, I want to end this thing. Uh, but th- they're using a strategy that is going to undermine what we're trying to do. I mean, it, it's going to have the exact opposite effect. You're, you're basically handing the enemy uh, ammo. I mean, sure, there's nothing wrong with the swastika per se. It's an ancient symbol for well-being, right? So you could you could say, well, I was just wearing a swastika to promote well-being, and I was wearing this white pointy hood balaclava to because it's a sensible protection against the weather. And I wasn't saying Jews will not replace us. I was saying juice will not replace us because I want to. Yeah. I'm tired of the big juice lobby constantly hogging the the grocery store shelves. But you'd be an idiot not to <laughs> think that that was going to be taken as uh, you being a white supremacist and and marching around. Now, here's what I will say though. Um, it is 
I, I guess, uh, ironic uh, or a little bit rich to see people like Rachel Notley, people who want a progressive totalitarian state, who want jackboots in the streets, keeping us all inside, um, talking about intimidation and uh, authoritarianism that these people represent. Um, you know, he, even in the worst case scenario, maybe let, let's suppose they are white supremacists marching around uh, tr trying to demand the end to lockdowns or something. Um, that pales in comparison to the authoritarianism that we're seeing right now uh, that the progressive left and, you know, Jason Kenney and, and conservatives uh, seem to be marching in lockstep with them uh, that they're portraying and that they're pushing for. So um, I, I, you know, the midwits are our enemies right now. And unfortunately, the dimwits are on our side, but they're just blundering around here, you know, knocking like a bull in a china shot, making things harder for us um, to, to push back. Well, yeah, I mean, this is an agonizing time to be a libertarian or classical liberal. I mean, we're seeing our liberties just crushed on every level. I mean, it's illegal to do business. It's uh, illegal to, for, for a religious congregation to gather. Uh, we literally have people getting whisked away from airports and white vans and locked into uh, hotels like you know you can call it a hotel but if you're not allowed to leave it it's a prison it's just one where they change the sheets every day it, right. it, it these are times we should be pushing back rationally against this you know and 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 something i saw that was really good as well i mean there's a lot of questionable uh uh basis for these lockdowns and such there's a, a lot of valid questions to ask about the medical basis on why they feel it's necessary or whether it's effective or not and the last Monday, there was a fantastic presentation with Daniel Smith and another that I thought was great, you know, with, a, with uh, the former head of emergency management, uh, David Redmond, and, and explaining why, you know, we should push back and why these things aren't great. And it was productive. But what I'd also like to see is a groundswell of people standing up and saying, you know, that's enough. We, we, we are not going to take this any longer. And I've gone right. to multiple events in downtown Calgary, hoping to see a bit of that coming about. And when I went to them, it's been since December because I stopped going because I had people telling me about the lizard people conspiracy. And I had people telling me about, you know, the, that the Proud Boys were providing security at the event. And again, right, that's right. a whole separate on whether or not, you know, they, they have been mislabeled or, or unfairly treated or whatever. But again, it comes back to symbols. And if you bring the wrong yeah. symbol in, you'll lose your message. And that the Proud Boys, as an organization... Uh, if you're going to have them front and center at a gathering, you're not going to hear about anything else that was talked about at the gathering. You're just going to hear about the presence of the Proud Boys. Yeah. Um, I spoke with Angelo Isaduro last night. He's a guy in, in uh, BC who uh, runs, uh, ironically, a blog or a podcast called Cancel This, who's being canceled because he'd done the OK sign. And the tie came after him and uh, he's pushing back. But part of the discussion was, he used that OK sign five years ago before it had been uh, taken and turned into a supposed symbol of white supremacy. Symbols change. And it's, it's not yeah. a question whether it's fair or not fair. Because then you get the others. It's a tiki torch. I mean, 10 years ago, people had them on their patios. And you know what? You still yeah. can. Yeah. You don't march with one. It, it's <laughs> changed. It's yeah. It, well, and that's just it. And here's here's the thing. Like again, these people are out there marching. They're taking a stand. There's that is to be commended. And God bless. You know, I, I wish more people were out there. I'd be out there if I, if I wasn't worried about someone doing something idiotic. Like uh, you know, I, I went to this rally in on Canada Day and spoke at it. And there was a huge contingent of people that were delivering a message. This guy raised uh, over a hundred thousand uh, dollars to pay for a legal fees to draft this letter that he, they, he then hand delivered to the American embassy. So Donald Trump would ar arrest uh, Justin Trudeau. And, you know, look, I want to go there and I want to speak to people who want freedom, but I don't want to get sucked into these uh, idiotic conspiracies and, and um, worldviews and, and have a rational, uh, logical pushback against these horrendous authoritarian measures tainted with um, nuttiness. Uh, I, I Part of me wonders if some leftist didn't do that poster up and hand it to Pulowski and say, hey, Jericho March, let's, you know, because I, I, 
I mean, I, I don't know how else to explain it. You, you, this is exactly what you would do if you wanted to, to, to discredit a movement. Um, these people ate it up. You know, I had some people saying, well, if God told me to march with tiki torches, uh, I wouldn't question it. I would just do it. My question is, okay, if you have the worldview that God's speaking to you, how, how do you know that wasn't Satan speaking to you? How do you know? It, isn't that exactly what Lucifer would do? Hand you something that would make you look terrible and would undermine your cause and undermine righteousness and, and morality? Uh, because that's essentially what these people are doing. But, you know, Christians here, God bless them, because they seem to be the only ones with some backbone, at least, to stand up to this. I mean, churches are, are going ahead and, and having services. Um, and, you know, Ryan Jesperson uh, tweeted out once, why is it that these religious nuts seem to be the ones that are pushing back. And I said, well, maybe it's because they already believe in it and worship a non-corporeal uh, entity that uh, sees all and is all powerful. And so they, they, they don't want to worship the state like the progressives do. Um, and, and so I, I try to keep that in the back of my mind that, look, as bad as some of these people are at kind of making blunders, well-intentioned blunders and and making things difficult for the rest of us, they're still nowhere near as bad as these people that worship the state and and want to impose these lockdowns on us. Yeah, well, and Derek Fromm, uh, uh, you know, a lawyer who's always been a, in pursuit of liberty as well, wrote a piece in the Western Standard about that on how uh, secular people don't understand the Christian mindset when it comes to the, you know, the pastor being locked up and why they feel that they have to push with this. And, and uh, there's, I'm not a religious man, but I appreciate the value of religious freedoms and, and uh, the, the pressure this is putting on people of faith in being kept from their, their social and religious gatherings. So they are turning into the, the forefront of it. And I also understand that the vast majority of the <clears throat> active Christian, po Christian population aren't crazy. They're the rational people who have serious concerns. Uh, just like with any large group of people, though, you're always going to have a few who are a little more... Uh, uh, out there than others. And, and uh, right now, it, it seems to be uh, Mr. Palowski's group, kind of, and, and they just keep inflaming this, which taints the works. And uh, yeah. they're setting it back. And, and that's part of the frustration, because they, uh, a lot of the supporters of him can't take a bit of, even if crabby, constructive critique, they lash back, oh, you're calling us white supremacists. No, I never called you that. Yeah, you know, you're yeah. saying you couldn't get out and protest. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, guys, have a look. You know, look at your own video. Just try to disconnect for a minute and just watch it and think about it and, and consider it. But no. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, so I want to leave it with maybe some helpful suggestions or advice for for people who want to protest and, ha and what would what would we recommend people do if they're going to protest i mean obviously the first thing is consider your audience right and and you know I, try to understand what the whole point of your pro protest is what is the metric you're trying to move what are you trying to do you're trying to sway public opinion you're trying to attract people to your protest you want these the joe blow my neighbor who lost his business or a, another guy on my facebook who lost his job and and lost his home and now he's in a homeless shelter and doesn't know where he's going to eat um all these people who have been apolitical their most of their life you know and and they haven't really thought about politics and now their lives are being destroyed. I mean, these are people ripe for the picking who will come and march with you if if it looks like you are reasonable and you are uh, a voice for them. But when you come at it with these crazy extreme things, uh, even, you know, like the religious symbolism of, of a, a tribe of Israelites that are going to knock down walls and take over a city or something like that normies aren't going to be attracted to that that may rile up some religious um, sentiment in in you and get you motivated to go out there and march but it's going to turn everyone else off so go out there and say and and promote religious freedom and say i demand the right to worship and i demand the right to congregate and th there's a higher moral law here than the government and the government is acting immorally and attract other people to your message but stay away from uh conspiracies stay away from do, do you have any uh, words for these people or or suggestions i mean what would get cory morgan out there marching alongside these people yeah, well, if they just stick to messaging. I mean, you, you can have a large protest with a number of people, I guess you could say of factions who are representing different aspects of it. Um, how to get there might be a little difficult because you need a tipping point of 
you know, a, a larger number of people to, to be speaking to every facet then of the concerns, whether it's the business community or just concerned individuals. But right now it's dominated by a, a religious end. I mean, stick to messaging. You know, you're a street preacher. Well, great. You're preaching and you're trying to proselytize it. Do that. But when you're marching particularly against the lockdown, stick to the lockdowns, because I didn't hear a heck of a lot about that actually at all throughout his, uh, his gathering. So if they can just bring it on to a solid direct message sure there's going to be some people in the crowd who are still a little different than others but if, if the majority of the messaging sticks to the lockdowns then it'll be effective yeah absolutely all right Corey. well thanks for all the work you're doing there and uh providing a rational voice and and uh you know um promoting that angle uh i hope more people jump on board you know it'd be nice to have some organizers maybe maybe uh, i ought to get off my lazy duff and and organize something but again you know i'm i'm worried about the the kind of people that it will attract and it's usually the the craziest voices that are the loudest and um you know it's an unfortunate thing it's it seems like uh the left has a definite strategic advantage when it comes to things because it no matter how crazy and and violent and insane their voices get um, mainstream media which and, and culture which of course leans far left um, will apologize for it and and excuse it and and provide all sorts of cover for it but as soon as anyone on our side the, the side of liberty and smaller government uh, has just the perception of of impropriety um you know we're labeled nazis and white supremacists so it, it, it makes it very difficult for us it, and like you said it's not fair life is not fair this is not right that that we're automatically portrayed and not taken in good faith that it's automatically we're perceived as evil and bad faith actors uh, but that is the reality we live in and we have to confront that reality and we have to uh, we have to adjust for it and we have to contend with it. And, and we have to, in religious parlance, abstain from all appearances of evil, not just abstain from evil, but young man, abstain from all appearances of evil. That is the cross that we have to bear, Corey, even uh, as atheists as we are. Uh, but hopefully that'll appeal to some of the religious that might be listening. Great. Well, and thank you for being the most patient uh, political leader in Canada. Because if anybody <laughs> does know about herding cats, there's there's nobody more disinclined to being led than a libertarian. Yet That's at the right. same time, if we get anything done, somebody's got to hold them together. So yeah, thanks. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, the trick to herding cats is you put down a warm saucer of milk. That's what I found. So, you know, you got to find that warm saucer of milk. And it's not easy. Waving a stick around is a lot easier. But it, it's, uh, like you said, it doesn't, it doesn't work, especially for libertarians. Awesome. Uh, Corey, where can people find more of your work and, and find out uh, your blog and that sort of thing? Sure. Well, I'm always ranting at CoreyMorgan.com. Uh, I write quite prolifically and, and do some uh, digital stuff at the Western Standard, which is uh, WS Online. And uh, I write the occasional columns for the uh, Epoch Times as well. So I'm always awesome. up making noise. Very good. Well, thanks so much and uh, have, a, have a good day. Thanks, Tim. All right. Bye.